So today on how to fix it yourself, we're doing the uh, BMW that we've worked on before. This is the E38 2001, but we're doing the window regulator on the front door. And while there is a lot of specific issues relating to doing the BMW window regulator, there's a lot that has to do with almost any re window regulator on most cars. So you can use this as a guide for whatever car you have. Uh, it's interesting that we mentioned in our previous video when we did the back window that BMW tends to have a problem with their window regulators breaking on a fairly regular basis. Um, well, you like to have things work on a regular basis, breaking on a regular basis is just not that good. So anyway, so we did that one and sure enough the front one went out and so now we're going to work on the front window here. The one caution before we get started is to realize, and this is true on any of the more modern cars, you're going to have airbags in the, um, in the doors, maybe in the overheads, uh, sometimes on the post, definitely on the steering wheel. So if you're working on any of those areas, you want to be sure and disconnect the battery. So we've already disconnected the battery, so we aren't going to have to worry about this airbag here when we uh, going off accidentally when we take the door apart. So we're going to go ahead and get started here and uh, we'll walk you through the different processes for getting it apart and putting it back together again. So the first thing we need to do is we need to pull the Phillips screw underneath this little cap here uh, by the door handle. Get a little screwdriver in there and you can uh, just go ahead and pull that out. Oops. And of course it's important to drop it on the ground. So once we get the cap off, uh, we discovered that this one here is a T20 rather than a, a Phillips like the back door. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, pull that out of there. It's not in very tight, so just get it loose. And you should be able to pull that out. Just rotate it with your fingers. Well, I'm really having a dropsies on these. Okay. And then you can work the uh, handle out of there just so that you can uh, make sure that you've got it uh, enough, loose enough to where you can turn it. When we come time to pop it out of the door, we can turn it and get it back in underneath. Looks like we're going to have to get the door off of there first. Or the panel, excuse me, not the door, but the panel. All right, so the next thing that needs to come out is your switches. And if you'll just get a screwdriver underneath, uh, you can kind of start working that out. And again, we don't want to pull it out too much. We want to just get it loose enough so as that we can uh, get the door panel off of there. So with these, you want to uh, push down with a screwdriver. This is a latching bar that you want to pull all the way down and out, uh, get it out of the way, and then this whole assembly pops out of there like that. So that's how those two come out. For this one, uh, unlike the uh, lock bars, this one has a uh, lock bracket right here. So you need to pull forward. And once you get it forward, then this piece should pop out of there. So to get this bottom one out, like we mentioned, this slide piece has to come out. Now it's going to be a little bit tricky because the plastic may be old. There's a couple of slots here in the bottom that go wrap around the little pegs here that hold it in place. So you have to kind of work it a little bit out, kind of keep prying it up a little bit and then moving the slide out and it'll pry it up and slide it out. If it was brand new, it would just slide out and pop out of there. But this is old, we want to be cautious with it, so we just took it a little bit at a time until it finally got popped loose. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is pull the clips. Again, this will be old, so you want to kind of be cautious with getting in there to get the clips loose. And just start kind of working your way around. And if you can find the clips, so as you're prying right next to the clips, you've got a better shot of popping them loose like that. All right, we're going to go ahead and finish taking the door panel off and we'll come back to you. 
So once you get them pretty loose all the way around, there's a clip in the center and you've got uh, clips up at the top. You need to push up a little bit and then you can pull it out and that'll release all of those clips. Now when you pull it off, be careful because you still have some electrical connections that you need to uh, undo. Again, be sure you feed your uh, door handle through there. And then we'll just go ahead and finish disconnecting the various switches here. They're just clips that need to be, oh, this is another one of those slide clips, it looks like. So just need to work your way around, get all the clips off that need to come off and uh, get all your electrical loose. There you go. All right, now that we've got all the, then we've got one last one, same deal we had with the rear door, which is the light down here at the bottom. Notice that the uh, clip is on this end, so you wanna work from this side, kinda work it out. It's got these plastic clips that hold it in there. And once you get that out, then you can take and pop out the, the electrical connector and feed that then back through the door. Come on, there we go. All right, so get that out and that completely releases the door panel. So we have this vapor barrier here. Uh, almost all cars will have a vapor barrier. It's to prevent water that gets in between the window uh, and the uh, frame from coming inside the car. You really don't want that. Most of them will have some kind of a drain hole down here on the bottom where the water can leak out. Sometimes they're capped and you have to pull that but you really don't want to damage the vapor barrier if you can help it. If it is all torn up, you're going to have to find something to replace it by. Uh, I've seen people use um, heavy duty, um, uh, that uh, painter's uh, polypropylene uh, plastic, you know, where they've just shoved it in there and kind of glued it in place. Anything that'll keep the uh, moisture out will be useful. But we're gonna try and pull this without damaging this vapor barrier, and we'll talk about that. There's a bunch of stuff that has to come off, and we're gonna start working on that. Uh, you can see all the different items here. Some of them we've already removed, some of them we will. But let's focus on the airbag here for a second, because we've gotta pull the airbag in order to be able to get that vapor barrier removed in order to get at the window regulator. So we've already, We've already disconnected the battery, and we mentioned that right up front because you've got the airbag here. You don't want to be messing around with having power to the airbag and have it accidentally go off in your face. Not a good time to spend a bit of time in the hospital with scratches and dings from the airbag. So these will be tight little screws 10 millimeter. All right. Okay, so you need to pull this side off first. You can see the clip right here that will release out of the notch there. Then we've already released it, but you'll notice there's a, a, little, a little lever right here that sticks out back here that releases it from this uh, clip there. So you need to push that over as you pull it off and then it comes right off. Again you can see how it has a little notch right there to lock, lock that in so it doesn't come loose. So that'll get your airbag out of there and out of the way. Set that aside. I don't recommend hitting it with a hammer. That would be a bad thing. So the next thing we're going to do is pull the speaker. Again, this has one of those latch systems. Uh, this takes a little bit to pop that down. Then you can pull the uh, 
this connector out of there and that'll allow you to uh, have everything disconnected to be able to pull the speaker. There's Phillips screws all the way around it so you just need to pull those screws out and then we'll lift that out. So we'll go ahead and pull the screws we'll come back and show us pulling the thing apart. Okay so once we take the last of the screws, the last of the screws out, we can just get this out of the way. Again, be careful with the uh, cone. You don't want to damage that. Don't want to get a finger or a thumb through that. So uh, we're going to set this aside and keep it safe. All right. Then we need to get this light housing here that goes to the fiber optics out of the way as well. So just pull up on the clip, and we can set that apart. <coughs> So you'll notice we've got to get the cable by itself in that slot. So you need to get the, the sheathing back far enough where you can pop that up out of there. And then that just unhooks like that. And then we can get that through there. Now the vapor barrier is put on with a, a real gluey kind of a tarry type of a, a material. Uh, if you take and just cut it with a box knife, it makes it a little easier and you really want to work your way around gently and try and get the uh, as much of that off of there as you can. And when you put it back together again, if it's like this right here where it's still quite stuck, it'll re-glue itself. But just work real slowly. You don't want to be tearing up your vapor barrier. That's, as I mentioned earlier, it's not a good thing. You want to be sure you uh, preserve that and don't want to have to try and replace it. I'm sure if you can even get the part, it's going to be quite expensive. <laughs> 